it's not something that, that is in your conscious mind, really. It's just, it's just sort of, I really think it's something that you channel from somewhere else. And, and then when you, when you hit on something, you just know that you, you know that you found it. You know that it's like, this it feels good. Yeah. So. Our music's like not really thought, it's like felt out, not really thought out. Someone once told us that it was body music. Which I kind of think is like a kind of a good description. start out being exactly like this, you know. We started out really improvising a lot more together and, and playing kind of no noisier stuff. When I met Aaron, he was doing like all improvised music and I was in a band that was really structured and I was kind of used to just writing that way. And when we started playing together, I, I like kind of had to loosen up and learn how to improvise more. And I think Aaron just, you know, had learn to or you know got more into like writing songs i think we kind of both just learned from each other but after a while like the improvising that we were doing kind of turned into like kind of naturally started to become songs like the more we played together we just started playing the same things over and over and they became songs and then we began consciously writing songs writing parts and, like, and i love writing poppy stuff it's just like you know i love poppy music and when Aaron has like all these synths that he he's made that are, are really noisy and um, so it's kind of cool to try to like blend the two ideas. The synth thing's been going on for a long I mean it's been yeah it's it, it's with Peaking Lights but we also did it in Raw, raw Dunes as well and it definitely took a new shape with Peaking Lights, like trying to take that and apply it to our version of what pop music sounds like, you know. machines and that sort of took us like an hour we'd always have to be like we need an hour to we need an hour before we play to set up so you have to give us an hour to set up and then we realized we needed to euro size so we euro size to this I just built two more synths so I can just switch between these two and then this and then that box which does a bunch of stuff I mean Indra had just as much stuff as I did too in the last setup it was like seven or eight keyboards that were just good for one particular sound and it'd be like a couple different tables of them so you know this this song i'll play this keyboard and then i'll play this one on this song and this one on this other song so it's just kind of been changing um changing how we do
We have to record like the bass and, and then like either live drums or electronic drums. We just have to kind of do like a rhythm, like set up the rhythm tracks by doing it live. Like we've never used loop pedals. It's always been, I, I like playing bass, so let's just like make that, let's incorporate that in the band too. Indra is a killer drummer, so let's have her play live and then figuring out how to get those the sounds to work out. So we pre-record this stuff, and so we'll have like these back tracks that we play during our live performance, and then we play, then we play over that. Um, our keys. We have like a really old computer that we call a cassette tape. <laughs> <laughs> shows in the last year because I was pregnant and then I had this little guy and so um, we kind of took a break but 9 through 6 came out it was like this new you know excitement around the music again so it's nice to be able to start playing out again actually it's feel it's felt really good to play it front to back like to play it like just the record because I mean we wrote it as a vinyl release the what came out on the CD was not intended for vinyl so to play it as like what the vinyl... Yeah, the set we're going to be playing is the vinyl record front to back. What is 936? Um, uh, we can't tell you that. <laughs> There's clues everywhere, but, um, but we can't tell you. <laughs> I mean, who knows what we'll be like in two months, you know, after all this is over. <laughs> we'll be living in a completely new place. We'll have recorded another record. People have gone to Europe. Miko will be a world traveler. He's even got a passport now. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like when once we had once we had him, it was kind of like that. It was like, I felt like, okay, I'm okay with not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. Instead of like feeling like I had to know what what the answer was. Just like I just felt okay with not knowing. Which is kind of weird to say because I think most people have a kid and then become super religious or something like that, you know, or it's like I guess it's kind of the extreme opposite. Okay, let's just like ride the experience vibe or something. <laughs> Yeah, it's true, you know, and it's not really good to stress out too hard on things, you know, I mean, at a certain point I just sort of thought, well, we just do our best, you know, we just, you know, we prepare as much as we can, we'll write the rest of it in the studio, and, you know, yeah, it'll be influenced by the experience we're having, you know, so. 